starting the recording. Oh, wait a second. I need to save this one first. Saving helps. Saving helps. What are we saving? Our lives. The world. Let's see. This is going to be 187. And this is Ryan Turner. Ryan. Orion. William Tunna. <laughs> good movie, good movie. Good movie. Ready? Almost. Alright, here we go. Don't you worry, don't you worry, child. Pigeon. Dove. Street Dove. rat. Street rat. Flying rat. Frat. <laughs> Just making shit up. <clears throat> All right, YouTube. This one is just for you. Nobody else gets to see this except for you, Tube. You, Tube. Uh, uh, that was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. A little play on words there. Uh, I have my moments. Yeah, you're punny. <laughs> All right. And we are ready to go in three, two, one. One. Welcome to another episode of Business Bros. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages. Now we can all see. Degeneration X proudly brings to you. Ooh, haven't gone that far in oh, a while, man, dude. It's, really? been, it's been a minute since I've watched. Degeneration X proudly brings to you its tag team champions of the world: the Road Dog Jesse James, the Badass Billy Gunn, the New Age. Outlaws! <laughs> Back in the day, dude. Back in the day, dude. Back in the day. Not, dude, but think about that. I mean, when we used to watch TV, that was attention grabbing. Oh, we were yeah. focused. I mean, I don't know about you, but I remember as a kid, like growing up, I knew like when we got home from school, I was like, it's going to be Dark Green Duck, then like Chippendale Rescue Rangers, mm-hmm. then it was going to be like Tailspin. Like I knew exactly Duck what tails. was going on. Yeah, it mm-hmm. just knew perfect order, right? Mm-hmm. But like today... I don't know what's on TV. Like, I DVR all my stuff. I fast-forward the commercials. Like, <laughs> like my kids talk about um, YouTubers mm-hmm. like we talked about... Those shows. Cartoons. Yeah. Right? Trippy, though, but... Yeah, like, uh, what was his name? Pew- PewDiePie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, PewDie- PewDie- PewDiePie. PewDiePie, yeah. whatever. PewDiePie. PewDiePie. Yeah, yeah but, but your, I read, it, had, I read it, had the had actual word. Yeah. Like, PewDiePie. Know, PewDiePie, but yeah. it's PewDiePie. Your son your son just had to uh, correct, correct you on dude, that. Dude, but that's like, and he had like 94 million subscribers. I'm telling you, that's a country. That's a country. That's a country. Yeah, that's huge. It's wild. It's wild. I love it. So, uh, YouTube and Business Bros loyal listeners, we're going to get to that 94 million. Yeah. We don't get there. <laughs> I don't even know if we're, I... I don't know if the world would... Uh, I don't know if I could accept the world if a small country like that. If, and that's not even a small country. That's a freaking country. That's a country. That's, that's a, a that's country. A, that's a decent sized country. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know how many people are in the U.S. But ninety-four uh, million is quite a few. fifty million, maybe. So a third of the yeah. country. Yeah, a third. A little over a quarter. third. Yeah, that, a third a quarter somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah, well, it's less than four hundred, but more than three hundred. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, around but there. nine times four is thirty-six. So. Ooh. <laughs> you know how to you know how to do some I can, math. I can math a little. I can math a little. I can math a little. I'm not a math teacher, but I can math a little. <laughs> All right, dude. Before we get too far into the show, just a quick reminder: 365 pairs of shoes by the end of the year. That's what we're looking for. We're trying to get 365 pairs. We'd have a number of donations already. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much to everybody who's been donating. We really, really appreciate it. Um, we've had some cash donations, so we order some shoes on Amazon. We've had uh, even some some child size shoes. I mean, we. Every time I look at those, I think, man, that's cool. That's adorable. I really hope I don't have to give these away, right. you know, but you never know. There's a need for everything. So we'll take all kinds of lightly and you know, gently used pairs of shoes, kids shoes, adult shoes, whatever we're going to take. We're going to donate them uh, to, to the families in need. So 365 pairs of shoes, 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com and he'll ride out there with his Harley and pick up those shoes. Wow. So help us get to that goal. Help us meet and exceed that goal every single day. We're going to plug it um, for the rest of this year and hopefully we get there as fast as possible. Second on my agenda, 
is this guy right here in front of me. We don't have a guest today. This is just James. But I want to make sure that uh, we're all aware of what like what we do. We, <laughs> we we kind of don't spend enough time talking about what we do because we spend most of our time talking about what our guests do. Well, yeah, but that's actually, you know, after today's interview, uh, for those of you who are unaware, we're recording this right after our interview with uh, Ryan T.J. Turner. Go ahead and go back to listen to that episode if you want to learn about some uh, solar panel and well i mean it's all the information in about solar i mean it's it was a really cool interview uh, i got a little sci-fi with it it was pretty pretty fun um but right after the interview of course i mentioned him oh by the way uh you know did you know that people don't often look at their insurance when they need to blah blah blah, blah. and all of a sudden that clicked the thought in my head why didn't you ask that question during the show? Why didn't I talk about that during the show? Because it, but it makes a big difference, you know. If for those of you who don't know, uh, James and I are partners in our insurance agency, Pipeline Insurance, and there's two ways that we earn revenue in that business. One is the actual sales of insurance. So, like for example, if you're getting solar in your place, you need to look at your policy and make sure that that the insurance policy that you have covers the solar panel or the roof work that's going to be done for the solar panel. So, you want to make sure that's that's taken care of ahead of time, right? So, we actually we do sell the actual insurance products, but mainly what we do is we help generate another line of business for you. So, if you have a tax office, if you're a real estate brokerage, if you're a mortgage office and you want to add a another revenue form into your business we can we help you get an insurance license and then we help uh, train you in either commercial lines uh, home and auto uh, life and health whatever line of insurance that you want to write we help train you we get you the appointments and that way you have a license and a new way a new product to sell within your within your existing business it's just an extra revenue stream and that is really what we do in a nutshell. That's really what we're into. We're into the training aspect of it. We're into the learning aspect of it. We're into the engagement so that we can get you another form of revenue so we can get you in a position where you're making money so we can get you in a position where you're being of service to your clients in a much more efficient way because that's what really, really what it comes down to. The more people you can help at a high level, the more money you're going to make. And this is just another way to help more of your clients. That's it. It's just about multiple streams of income. M multiple, multiple streams, streams of, of income. There you go. There you income? Go. Income. Income. That's a new thing. Yeah. yeah we're yeah, we're yeah. going to coin that one. Income. Income. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but really, I mean, you know, that that's one of those things where I keep bugging James because during the podcast uh, when we usually have a guest and you see the camera change when it's on me or when it's on the guest or you know when it's viewing everybody at the same time that's James controlling that behind the scenes and when you're on the Facebook page and you're listening to the live broadcast and he's tagging people that we talk about or he's commenting saying thank you for listening that's James doing all that behind the scenes but what I keep trying to bug him at and, and it's kind of tough because he's trying to do multiple things at once so I just throw another thing on his plate anyways it's okay he can handle it is when he hears us discussing some discussing something that is a risk that puts maybe a client or a change or something that that triggers in his mind that hey that's an insurable interest that he say something that he comment that he comes in and says hey by the way ladies and gentlemen because let's face it if we're not thinking about it as the guest and the host we're not thinking about it chances are you the listener aren't thinking about it and it's something that you should be thinking about we're, we live in a, in a Southern California where we have fires every once in a while. We just had a huge amount of rain. So if you drive around, there's a lot of green grass everywhere, which is great. Beautiful. Except when it dries up. Mm -hmm. Right? And so these are the types of things that we want to make sure you're aware of. Cut the grass now. Get it done early. Don't let it grow so high, especially if you live in this certain area. When we're talking to guests and we're talking about different things, if he's just to pop in a little bit and answer, like ask those questions or even provide some information, I think the listeners would have a little bit more value in, in the show. Yeah, I mean, and that's just something that I need to get better on. Uh, and you're right. I mean, I'm I'm... You're doing a lot. I do a lot, and a lot of times I kind of tune out the conversation, so I actually have to go back and listen to the podcast to know what the <laughs> heck you guys were talking about. Uh, but yeah, I, I do need to get better about you know listening in as well as doing everything else that I'm doing uh, and making sure that you know those those types of risks, those types of um, Situations, situations, yeah. yeah they, we, and talk we just about address it. them, right? Yeah. That, that 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 they come up and and we can talk about them because it makes a big difference. Just being out there and, and 
discussing them, right? It's kind of like today, like when I was talking to Ryan in the show, um, we talked about the savings that we can pull out from putting solar, for mm-hmm. example, right? And for me, my mind is always going to how can I save more money? How can I put money away? How can I put money to work for us? Because that's that's a big thing for me. When I'm teaching 17-year-old kids, I'm telling them some things like, hey, you're at, you're at zero, when you graduate, you don't have any debt. You haven't acquired any debt. You're at zero. There are plenty of people in this world that are adults that have grown up and that have have you know let jobs and lives and careers and are 25, 30, 35 years old, and they're just desperate to get to zero, hmm. right? They're struggling with credit card debt. They're struggling with student loan debt because of the choices they made. They didn't know any better. Um, they thought they were going to go on <clears throat> on life's path a certain direction. It took them in a different direction, right? And so I'm trying to take this this life experience that I've had. I'm trying to take the life experiences that I've uh, grown aware of based on the guests and the people that we talk to and try, try and point them in the right direction. Give them a little bit of advice on, you know, the mistakes to that the mistakes that we've made show them the path that we've gone on so that they don't make the same mistakes and that's kind of one of those things where it really comes down to for me and i know we've talked about this way long time on the sh- on the show but with the difference between like the kiyosaki or the dave ramsey thing mm-hmm. right the difference between using leverage uh using debt to increase your net worth versus paying off everything in cash yeah. and you know I'm, I'm in the mindset you know especially for the individual to pay things off to mm-hmm. buy things in cash. And we had a good guest on the show recently when we were talking about business credit, right? Oh, yeah, Ty Crandall. Yeah, we were talking to Ty, and and I loved that conversation because it really broke down to me the difference between the Kiyosaki mindset and the Dave Ramsey mindset. Like, the Kiyosaki mindset, that's a business mindset. Mm-hmm. And and he talks about it all the time in his quadrant, right? employees the self-employed on one side of the quadrant business owner and, and investor on the other side of the quadrant mm-hmm. he uses leverage because he's thinking as a business owner mm-hmm. and in his corporation it makes sense to leverage right the corporation should leverage if the corporation goes under the corporation goes under you the corporation is a different entity it's there it's designed to take the risks that you the individual aren't going to take mm-hmm. but as an individual those should be all cash purchases you should have zero debt as an individual Aside from maybe a mortgage, and in, even then you should be over there paying it off. I actually really love that because now all of a sudden we have a sort of compromise between the two ideologies. Yeah. Well, I mean, even in our own personal investing, I still think we should be buying our rentals all cash instead of leveraging. Yeah. I just think it's it's better because I prefer to not get a check than to pay a mortgage <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when there's a vacancy, right? Sure, sure. So uh, so I, I kind of take hand in hand. But by the same token, the insurance agency, for example, building up the business credit on the insurance agency to have that money accessible mm-hmm. for, for doing things mm-hmm. like taking on new risks or new ventures or trying in different types of investment opportunities that we come across or different ideas that we want to implement to give it a shot, we can use the leverage money if it doesn't work, well, we can pay it back or we can pay it back slowly, but it frees up the cash in the meantime. Right. And I, I think that's a good strategy to have. That's a good thing to sit down with your with your partners if you're in business uh, and, and discuss a strategy going forward to implement something like that so that the company is taking the risk and, and the leverage, not the individual. Speaking of strategy, here's a quick question for you. What is your exit strategy with the insurance company? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know if you've I don't know if you've given it much thought, and it kind of popped into my head uh, during my meditation this morning where where I am with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I kind of wanted to talk a little bit and kill a little bit of time to give you some some opportunity to think. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I, I actually I kind of know where where I'm at because okay, so so for those of you who don't know, there's two pieces of our insurance company. We have a corporate level, and then we have our our San Diego team. Right, and so our corporate level, I'm I'm part owner in that one. But James isn't, and our San Diego team, James is obviously he pretty much runs the show on the San Diego team. So I, I, I ain't gonna lie, like, <laughs> that's that's his that's his baby. Um, but on the corporate level, I've already started to implement my exit strategy. For example, we're going to Texas this weekend, which is what, uh, with this uh, Thursday because. That's the reason why we're recording this ahead of time, so we have content to put out when we're away. Dun, 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 content every day. Um, but my pitch to them is going to be we need to have like a full-time 
controller or CFO on on staff, mm-hmm. right? Because our our business has grown to the point where it's a big. We're we're a big company. Eleven million dollars a year. Eleven million dollars a year is plus a, is a big company, mm-hmm. right? And uh, that's that's what's trackable. That's what's trackable. And so so for us, that's 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 to the point where you know money is going to slip through the cracks, and it doesn't affect it doesn't hurt us enough where it's going to make a big difference did i cut out in video no okay it doesn't hurt us where it's going to make a big difference but there's thousands of dollars that are slipping through the cracks Mm -hmm. that a full-time cfo controller could find isolate systematize so that those things are caught right and say essentially they could be saving us or finding the amount of money that we'd be paying them in salary or a good portion of what Mm -hmm. we'd be paying them in salary and position us for long-term growth right right because of those systems and that that we can put in place on that aspect and and so for me that's my way out when i got into this company we were we were tiny Mm -hmm. i mean i I always gauge it on the number of commission lines that we write right so we used to do a spreadsheet to like to well when i first got in as a partner there were no spreadsheets there was no organization right and that's kind of the problem so i came in as a partner to run the accounting and there was a spreadsheet that I put together and it had maybe 150, 200 lines that we were getting paid on commissions. It means each line is a policy that's being paid on for that month on commissions. Um, when we converted to a management system that tracked all that for us so that we didn't have to manually create that, we were almost to 3,000 lines of commissions of policies that were being paid on oh like right before we switched over to yeah to, per month yeah right and those are huge i remember i mean we would sit down on the couch on a whatever night and, and spend a good four or five hours just throw some marvel agents of shield on the tv yeah. and yeah and it was it was busy work right yeah. i mean it was just it wasn't difficult it was matching just matching policy with agents right to That's make it. sure that everybody got paid correctly and it was you know and now and, and but now we're to the point where there was no way i would be able to do that in the time today. frame that today, no, we had. That's why we had to switch over, and everything keeps getting bigger and bigger. So for me, and a long-winded answer for that exit strategy, for me, the exit strategy is already in play. It's replacing myself, mm. and then and then reaping the benefits of my shares in a company. Okay. So that's that's the exit strategy. That's your exit that's, strategy. That's for me. It's purely cash flow. Hmm. Um, Interesting. And and hopefully later down the road, maybe I have a place to stick my kids uh, if they want to start building a career for themselves, either in sales or in you know in like as an employee, whatever it is, it's an opportunity to be there to, to take over if they want to. But if they don't want to, the systems would be in place to just continue to spit cash flow, which is hopefully what I'm looking for. Nice. Nice. Um, I want to get bought out. Mm. So you want to replace yourself and then say peace. Yeah. I want to. Well, my goal is to build all of the systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one of the big ones that we're working on right now is just the customer service it is the customer service system. There needs to be a system in place for it. When somebody calls, there should be a procedure. This is what we say. This is what we do. This is where we go. This is exactly how it works every time. And we have a, uh, a company that we've partnered up with that is helping to develop that process and put those things into place, which is awesome. So between that and the website design, the website redesign, uh, making it efficient and easy to use for new customers to show up and just buy a policy right there Um, and of course all of our internal systems that our agents use as well so all of these different systems that and and the accounting system is another another piece of it which you know you are you could possibly solve you know with with uh, hiring somebody that's a a full-time controller or whatever Um, but all of the different systems once they're all in play and working together and I literally can step back and not show up and not do anything for a week or a month or whatever and the system the, the, the system is in such good shape that it continues to run like a well-oiled machine, at that point, I, 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 you want to you wanna buy this thing for like $25 million? Yeah? Cool. Here you go. Yeah. It'll and I'm out. It, yeah, it'll make it pretty easy. I'm out. Yeah. And that's it. And from that point, I'm taking my millions and I am carefully investing it. <laughs> um, I mean, I might just turn around and buy a whole bunch of uh, rental property, you know, 
Because that's really what it is. It's, you're looking for a cash flow. That's it. Because ultimately, we've always had the same thing in mind is the 30000 a month in passive income. In other words, from rental real estate that's completely paid off, mm-hmm. right? And then pretty much do whatever you want. At that point, you're doing exactly what we talked about before, which is you're hitting the third worlds and uh, exactly. building schools and getting clean water and doing yep. that sort of stuff. Yep. And, and building something new at some point that I can take into my old age and, you know, enjoy. Yeah. That's crazy, though. I didn't know you want to get bought out. I, I like the idea I, of having the I cash flow. I didn't either until this morning. I was I was just meditating and I'm and I'm thinking of uh, so I have two keywords three three keywords eh, two keywords and a phrase <laughs> two keywords and a phrase so it was um, abundance appreciation and feeling good so those were the three things that I was just thinking about and uh, whenever I started thinking about abundance that's where I was like you know what what's What's my ultimate goal? What what do I want to do? And you know, in in the meditation, I'm kind of like drifting off, and I start thinking about you know where uh, the company is going to be and when what I want, and it just it hit me. I was like, yeah, I want to get bought out. Okay, that well, way I'm not in there anymore. Two things, two things. One, I want to go back to the meditation thing, uh-huh. right? Because remind me, students and meditation, students right? and meditation. Yeah. Okay, so that's one thing I want to talk about. Okay. Um, but second is. Like, you know, having that understanding of what your exit strategy, I think so many people don't have that. Mm-hmm. I think there's, there, you know, uh, I've been posting stuff online. I set my alarms up to tell me to post something, mm-hmm. right? And I've been posting stuff on Facebook that's very simple and easy, like, you know, complete the sentence or, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I've seen or, that. Yeah. And, the, and you've gotten a lot of and it's, uh, Because it's easy to engage, right? Yeah. It's easy to engage. Shout out to Rodrigo Bayon, by the way. I mean, he's he the one that he idea? gave me the idea. That's what he does. He put things like Target or Walmart, right? Yeah. And it's the engagement that we're looking for, right? Then, you know, powerful relationships, hashtag powerful relationships. It's the engagement. Um, so my goal is to keep them geared towards finance because honestly, dude, uh, one of the questions that I'm going to post here pretty soon is put these in order on, uh, put these in order in your priority order in your importance, right? Mm-hmm. Today, tomorrow or yesterday. Ooh, right. And and really, because that's a personal mindset thing, right? It is. I, I know for me, I, I, I'm tomorrow. always thinking about tomorrow first, no. right? I know. I think about yesterday and today is kind of just, you know, I got to get through today. Today's almost the third one. It's the third one on my list. And is really? it necessarily bad? I don't know. But I think of the past so I can improve my future. Um, and I'm doing both of those today. Like today, that's, today it, just where today is just where you are. It's just where I am, right? Mm-hmm. But I know so many people who aren't like that. They would they would position those in three different ways, and I'm curious to see what people are going to put out there. Heck yeah! But your your wife is completely different because she and I are often of that same mindset. It's all about the journey. It's all about today. Today, today yeah. is number one. Today's number one. Yeah, and and that's cool. You know, but but because, I don't know that she would answer that necessarily, but but I know I would. But people who don't have tomorrow <clears throat> as their number one. Like that's that's troublesome for their financial futures. For example, right mm-hmm. now we're in a in a booming time in our economy. Sure. It's great, everything's perfect. When shit hits the fan, like what's gonna happen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, what about you know? I'm gonna be 37 this year. Old so fart. in like yeah, so in like 30 years, there's <clears> gonna be a group of us that's gonna be retiring or have already retired. Mm-hmm. Can they? Have they put things away? Is their life gonna look the same? Is there like? Are they going to be suffering? I'll They're- tell you what. If you call uh, my good friend and partner Heather Williams over at uh, at Pipeline Insurance, H Williams at PipelineInsurance dot com, and uh, talk to her, she can get you set up so you can retire in thirty years. Promise. Yep. <laughs> Index Universal Life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, but that's that's the whole thing is. Um, Many people don't know about the various different investment products that they could do, mm-hmm. right? And and even if they do know about the different investment products, they have no money to put into these products. They they don't know where to find these funds. They don't know how to get themselves to zero debt. Don't mm-hmm. they don't know how to get themselves in a position where they're even financial literacy, right? Any financial literacy. And and that goes for people who are making a lot of money and people who don't make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what end of the spectrum there are. We've talked to a number of different people and and when the market changes, when the market shifts or when the economy shifts or, you know, God forbid is something like a major conflict like 
Things you know? are gonna things are gonna shake up, and it's gonna it's gonna be very detrimental for people, especially people with families and kids and stuff. Like, it gets a little scary when you start thinking about that sort of thing. So you called me out on something that I need to start doing on the show, which is to discuss the different insurance opportunities and and risk profiles of you know whatever business that people are in. So I'm gonna call you out on something personal finance. That personal finance piece we talked about it the other day. I did it today. Did you? Yeah. I took the uh, savings on the solar. The savings on the solar. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. See, you did. I'm, you did. I'm forcing myself to do that because I'm finding different avenues. I'm saying, I'm saying the people that we're actually talking to, to put ask them, on the them spot. put them on the spot. That's a tough one. That's yeah. a tough one. That, talk about a comfort zone thing. Ooh. That's a that's a toughie. Ladies Ooh. and gentlemen, I mean, we should I should post that up there. But see, I'm afraid that if I put people on the, on the spot like that, mm-hmm. Mm, I might not have as many guests that want to be on the show. <laughs> you know, money's a taboo topic. Yeah, money's a very taboo. But topic. But we're the business bros. This is what we talk about. We talk about business. We talk about money. We talk about what are you doing? You know, what are you doing in your life? First of all, we want to get to know you. We want to know what your business is. We want to know what you're doing to be uh, successful at the, at whatever it is that you're doing right now. But this is a show about money. Be prepared to talk about money. That's true. Yeah, that's that's. Be prepared yeah. to talk about business. We talk about profit. Mind your own business, right, Mr. Kiyosaki? Mind, Mind your, own, your business. own business. Your own business is your success. Your own business is your retirement. Your own business is making sure that when you hit that age of sixty-five, that you don't have to keep working. You get that choice. And hell, if you don't want to wait until sixty-five, because I sure as hell don't. You know. That's that's figure un- out how to get out of the rat race earlier. That's the thing. It's retirement is not an age. It's a cash flow problem. It is it's not an age problem. It's a cash. Flow that's problem. why I want to get bought out for twenty five mil. <laughs> that makes things easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you're talking about so I'll take twenty five million. I'll go invest in all kinds of real estate all over the place. Boom, 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 boom. So I got my thirty million. Your share. Yeah. That's that means you get 25 mil too. Dang. I was like, okay, well, 25 mil, or even 20 mil, or 25 mil, five partners, five mil a piece. That'd five mil a piece? That's fine too. I'll yeah. take that. I don't, know. <clears throat> I don't know if our partners want to sell, but hey, you know, we'll see. I mean, our book's getting bigger and bigger. Our training has gotten better and better. Mm-hmm. There's more reason for people that want to join the team. We're helping them along the way more and more. Mm-hmm. We're almost to the point where, you know, you want to refer something in all day long and we'll process it and get it done for you. Easy, <laughs> easy peasy. <laughs> done, done, done. And that's what a lot of people want to do out here. They just want to talk to people. They want to be salespeople. They don't want to deal with all the, the paperwork stuff. And, and if we can take care of that on the back end, it's going to be it, the growth rate is going to be phenomenal uh, in the next couple of years. It's already been good. Yeah. It's already been good. It's only getting better. It's only getting better because we're setting ourselves up to take on that huge influx of people. There you go. All right. Students in meditation. Students in meditation. So um, <clears throat> for next year in my class, right? I was thinking of starting every single day doing a session of meditation, doing a session of visualization mm-hmm. and journaling. I like it. And but it's going to be it's it's difficult because I don't do the meditation and the visualization myself very often. I've been doing the journaling, mm-hmm. but the visualization and the and and like and and the meditation still not really my thing. Like it doesn't, it it, it it doesn't come naturally. It doesn't come naturally for you to be able to teach it, right? And that's we what have I to worry about. It. I know that's, that's, that's what only, I worry about. That's the only way. But I think I think having those practices in play, like getting them to do those things, as awkward as it is for them, I I just feel like it would open up the discussion to different things that they're thinking of. Like give them the opportunity to to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. Turn off your phone. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Silent. Then let's visualize. So we should have like you're gonna help me do some like guided visualization, right? So that I can walk them through and like visualize things that they're thinking about, put them in a position of power for themselves, and then journal it, write mm-hmm. it down, and that can open a discussion. Because once we have those things, once they're in line like that, and then we can have a conversation in class. I mean, these kids have great ideas. I'll, I'll, I'll share one with you. So one of the kids in my in my class, Jake, I'm going to have lunch with him next Wednesday. Uh, yeah, next Wednesday. Um, he's almost 18. So when he turns 18, I'm going to have him on the show. He turns 18 in May. Nice. Um, he's one of the, he's what I would call one of the popular kids at school, right? And so we were, I, was t- I was using him as an example today. And I was telling one of the other kids about the importance of 
uh, your relationship and good customer service. And, you know, I was telling them about how, you know, business was in the 50s and 60s and how we left away from that, but we're yeah, going back this, to that. All of the uh, stuff that you've been... Yeah. The, all, yeah. All, what book was that that you've been uh, reading? Gary Vee's uh, Thank You Economy. Okay. Right? And he wrote that in like 2010, 2011. So it's all not right. like it's a new book or anything. Yeah, but still. But still. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so so I was talking about the importance of that, right? And, I, and then I, I said, for example, Jake... You know what Jake does really well every single day and why uh, he has, you know, I'm pretty sure he has a lot of followers on Instagram. This is before I knew his numbers, right? And he goes, why? I go, because every time he walks into the classroom, he makes it a point to come to every single one of you, shake your hand and say, what's up, man? How's it doing? How you doing? How you doing? He does that with everybody. Really? He goes in and shakes everybody's hand. That's like, very interesting. Up? Or a little, like, little, you know, yeah. a hand clap or whatever it is. But he does that with almost every single person in the room, right? And it's just a small gesture but it's a relationship gesture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I go, Jake, for example, how many followers do you got on Instagram? He's like, I don't know, like 1,500. I was like, do me a favor. I want you to put a post. Pancakes or French toast? And by the end of the period, we're going to see how many people responded. Right? He's like, all right, cool. So he put it on Instagram, put his phone in the box. I collect all the phones, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end, I was like, so how do we do? Over 204 views in the two hours that he was there and 90-something, like, comments comments on yesterday, like, yeah. French toast. And I forgot which one won. I think they're, they're pretty close to even. Whatever, who cares? But that wasn't the point. The point was, this is the number of engagement, the number of comments that he got on the one post. Why? Because he takes his time to shake the hand of the person that he sees, him, that he sees every day. So, this is a and combination so you were, thing. You were talking with somebody. I, I noticed a comment. I don't know. I don't remember who it was. But the social media is the uh, technological handshake. It's the technological handshake. Right? Because who that's were, what who are you is. talking to with that? I, don't, I forgot who it was. But that comment stirred from today's conversation in class. That's where it came from. Because it, it, in what people aren't connecting today, what they're falling away from, is it's not social media or, rela- or like personal pick up the phone and talk to people. It's not one or the other. It's both. Mm-hmm. People communicate via social media. So you need to communicate and talk to them mm-hmm. via social media. Right. But you also got to go over there and shake their hand. Yeah. It's both. It's both. People want to feel important. They want to feel engaged. They want to feel like you actually care about them. Mm -hmm. You do that, they're going to do all kinds of business with you. It's awesome. And that's what it comes down to. At that point, that's the kind of relationships that you want to build. So that's just an hashtag hashtag powerful powerful relationships. relationships. And that's why I want to make sure that I'm talking to, you know, that that I want to do these (laughs) visualizations, these, um, these, uh, meditations and these journaling because it can open up the conversation to a bunch of these stuff. If I spent a two hour period talking about this and enhancing relationships wait, wait, wait. and they implemented your, your 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 classes are two hours long each? Yeah, two hours long. Oh each. gosh, yeah. You can take ten minutes yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Or or you know, a little bit more, whatever. It doesn't matter because 10, if it leads to 10 a, or fifteen. Yeah, if it leads to a conversation and the conversation is powerful mm-hmm. and engaging and these kids take something out of it and they start building relationships and networks for their future, totally worth it. All right. I'm gonna recommend something to you. It's an app called Headspace. Headspace. It's ninety five dollars a year. Okay. Um, but I use it for my meditation daily. And it's that exactly that guided meditation that you're talking about. And they have different courses. So you actually can do like a beginner's course. So, you know, the beginner's course, it, start, it maxes out at 10 minutes. So you could set that up for your students and for yourself to just learn how to meditate. Learn the purpose of meditation. Hmm. Right? And then there's, uh, so the basics courses, there are three of them. And each one is 10 days long. So it would take you, what, 30 days to get through the first basics courses just to learn how to meditate. And then after that, they have a bunch of different courses that you could get into. um, Everything from productivity, mindfulness, um, creativity, whatever. And so you listen to these newer guided meditations that kind of drive you towards uh, that type of a mindset. And yeah. Hmm. So that might be a good way for you to go. That might be a good way for me to go because then I don't have to create it. Something I don't really know. Yeah. It's just easy to do. What's it's it called there. again? The app? Uh, Headspace. All right, ladies and gentlemen. You're, if you're like me and you're struggling with meditation and visualization and all that stuff. Recommend it. it. Headspace it. 
Headspace it. All right, guys. So just a reminder, 365 <clears throat> pairs of shoes by the end of the year, 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com. He'll jump on the Harley. Go and pick them up. And if you're interested in adding insurance to your business, let us know. James at csfirst.com. I mean, he'll he'll get you in contact. Uh, he'll actually reach out to you, explain the whole process, tell you what it costs, tell you what you learn, tell you where to get everything squared away. You don't have a license, but you're interested in getting one. Let us know. We'll get you all hooked up with that stuff too. So james at csfirst.com 619-884-0045 for all your insurance needs and if you want to be on the program 619-884-4915 is my number hernan at csfirst.com or you can follow us on social media at business bros pod that's all we got for you guys today peace bye bye and i'm out thanks youtube see you guys boom